I love routines. Routines where you come in and uh, you do sort of a shotgun thing through a certain uh, problem that somebody's having. In this case, it's going to be carpal tunnel. You go through uh, and do this generally, and then if you're still having problems, get more specific. Do your orthopedic exams and get more specific. So this is the first pass that you make. I've got Tim Supine. The first thing I want to know is how's that elbow doing? That's really important because a lot of stuff can get jacked up there in the elbow and it's going to break down the plasmic flow of nutrients through that median nerve by the time it gets through the carpal tunnel. We call it carpal tunnel, but it isn't carpal tunnel. Here we go. Fist along the uh, both sides of the arm and all I'm doing is pronation with the fascial bags, pronating, making sure that you're not got the, don't have the wrist out here. You've got both bones. Pronation, making sure they have all complete pronation. Supination, turning of the palm up. Supinate, pronate, supinate. And if they don't, you scrub that, those bags until they get a little bit better. Supination and pronation. He's pretty good both ways, not bad at all. And what is the last motion at the elbow? Really only three that you need to worry about. Pronation, supination, and extension. Got to have full extension. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Okay, so now that we know we have that, I'm just going to do one little technique here because we know that a lot of carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by tightness in your flexor muscles. Tim's a rock climber, so look at his fingers. Just relax those fingers. Relax those fingers. Relax those fingers. They are relaxed. That's the point. Could be a carpal tunnel type person at some time because it's really uh, cramping that up in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in like that, put an extension, but you don't want to put in a lot of extension because that hurts them. That stretches that nerve and that hurts them. I'm just tractioning it. At the same time, I'm going to kind of turn this around and just sweep up. General loosening of the flexor musculofascial tissue. Moving it away from the injury site. Three or four times, you don't have to spend a lot of time on that. Tim, lie on your left side, please. Okay, so we've got him on his left side. Let's get up here. And I'm just going to do some uh, rolling of the fascial bags here again. Got to keep thinking. Globally, don't get in there and start digging on that carpal tunnel until you get all this stuff feeling just as groovy as possible. And it's feeling really good now on Tim. Notice how I'm not being real gentle. I'm making it move. All right. So, let's get you on your back for one second. Now, we're going to web fingers here like this. Again, don't take them into extension. And we're going to come into the bones that uh, are anchored to the transverse carpal ligament. What are they? Pisiform over here, flexor carpi ulnaris. One of its only attachments is to pisiform and to the hook of the hamate right above it. So you got pisiform, hook of the hamate, uh, trapezium, and the scaphoid. So that's the, the, those are the bony landmarks. Where you do not want to be is in here. So we're going to want to spread. I see people spreading like this. They get in the palm wrapper neurosis and they start spreading like this. They get in here and spread. You can't do that. You can't be squashing that nerve. You got to come in here and get on the bony landmarks and spread them. Just stay on those bones. If you can feel them in there. They're really easy to palpate, no problem. So I'm just spreading that palm wrapper neurosis, keeping the hand in neutral as much as possible, opening up that, that carpal tunnel. One last thing that you need to always check are the proximal carpal row bones. And so where are the 
proximal carpal row bone. So all you got to do is bend the wrist like that, and this is it. That's the proximal carpal row. Why do we care about the proximal carpal row? Got the scaphoid and the lunate that uh, are attached here. Those two bones can be a problem, but particularly the lunate bone. People fall flat like that. It jacks that lunate bone into the carpal tunnel area and crowds out the median nerve with all those tendons running through there. Tendons get swollen, and until that lunate goes back into place, doesn't matter what kind of carpal tunnel stuff you do, a lot of unneeded surgeries are done because of lunate displacement. Simple technique to do. Simply come in, don't care about where you are with these fingers in here. They can be on the scaphoid, they can be on the lunate, it doesn't matter. I know exactly where I'm going to be, and so I just simply decompress. Notice how I'm leaning back, decompression. I'm going to ask uh, Tim to just lift his wrist toward the ceiling. Not the whole, um, just your hand toward the ceiling. Just your hand. There you go. Two. Perfect. Three. Four. Five. And I just jostle that joint. Let it go. Jostle that joint. But at the same time, notice what I'm doing. I'm compressing those bones. Compression. As long as you're not right in that median tunnel, you're all right. And I'm not. Okay, that's the general flyby on carpal tunnel.